What's up? Morning. <laughs> Talking Morning. about wait. <laughs> this is like fuck it. <laughs> Fucking Friday. Like <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> We're just doing it. <laughs> we both just got together, everyone. So welcome aboard. You don't even this know. Crazy Friday. You yeah. Get to know what happened. Okay. Holy shit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Crypto and Coffee, where we <laughs> talk about crypto and drink about coffee. So, good hold morning. Hold. Good morning, everyone. We are good to go. Well, anyways, this week's been cool. I'm like, I'm like in a great headspace right now. Um, I'm the Data Lord. This is Jaime, in case anyone doesn't know. And um, we like to play Bitcoin games precisely look at where we enter where we exit and where we huddle kids these days uh so let's go over the markets real quick we'll do a market update hi may certainly got some cool things we had a, a little bit of a shotgun pull you know with bitcoin's price but uh let's look at the markets and how they reacted shall we <laughs> so looking over here we can see that the uh, general market, you know, Bitcoin right now is down 3.9% for the 24 hour. Imagine that. It's not like we've been talking about what's about to happen. Um, yeah, I show me the charts. Fantastic. I'll tell you the forgive news. Forgive me. Forgive me. Uh, Ethereum being a copycat, copying what Bitcoin's doing. Imagine that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, everyone else, Everybody else kind Look of that bleeding dip. out why is that that's because bitcoin is the leader in the space whatever bitcoin does you'll see the shark came out with. and now yeah. little guppies and everyone are running to their little hiding places yeah before daddy pulls his belt down gives the boy a licking <laughs> you know uh litecoin is also a copycat for your bitcoin um because it's kind of basically the test net for Bitcoin, and it got kicked in the nuts 6.6%. 6 .6%. So uh, that's that general market view. It's okay. It's a great buying opportunity, quite honestly. If you're looking to DCA, it's DCA Friday. Not a bad time to do it. Uh, also, uh, please forgive me. Uh, we do roll call. And what roll call is, is uh, you say good morning in the chat. You say what's up, something like that. Before we get into the stories after market update, we'll give you a shout out because we love you and you're part of the show. That's so right. we do it for you. Yeah, you know we think you think you're 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 nice. We think you you're nice. So um, looking look, looking at the very big picture, right? I don't know if uh, anyone who's new has seen this or not, but that's okay if you haven't. Um, we basically have a big S curve that shows. Bitcoin's price over time with the halvings. And the reason it's an S curve is because the halvings are uh, every four years cutting the supply, the introduction of supply rather, of Bitcoin in half. So miners get paid half as much Bitcoin uh, from the introduction of supply and they start just getting paid more and more in transaction fees as Bitcoin's adoption increases. So uh this mechanism built into bitcoin is actually pretty genius by satoshi what this does is it creates scarcity and so as time goes on uh there's these market moves where it's almost like the ante is upped it's like everyone's playing poker and the ante goes up and uh you know blinds are six hundred dollars kind of thing right so um that just in keeps increasing it and uh you know if we look in we really really zoom in on uh, where we are currently, you can see we basically rock all off these bands, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, people pay a lot of money for these types of charts because they are really, really telling. Um, and so we want to give that to you, the lay investor, so that you can have the same information to to work with, right? So you can see right here, we have this bottom yellow line. Well, we're bouncing up right off that. We uh, bounce 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 and then had a big shoot up to you know this key level right here and now we're coming back down it's possible we tap this again if we do yes. it's 18 and it's also possible we flash down to uh, where we previously touched on it's not likely to happen but it can happen it sure can yes at the end it happened in 2014 and it's happened in the past where we flash below the the that s curve 
and this S curve is part uh, a lot of new technologies. Actually, there. Do you see it right below? I, I know the green hides it, but you can yeah. see the dip. It's about a good percentage right down. here. You can see yeah. this wick I'm on right here. It, cre it, mm -hmm. it did flash below the yellow, so it's it's not unprecedented Correct. that that could happen. Is what Jaime is saying, right? This is yes. 2014. We're looking at. We yes. wicked down to 150, 159 dollars for Bitcoin. Damn, wouldn't that be nice? Can you imagine <laughs> the guy who sold that bottom. <laughs> it's like well, no! he probably swing trades. It's probably not crying be better. <laughs> better. You know, someone back had then to be on the selling side too for that not swing trader to get in. So yeah, it was just people buying drugs, probably. But who knows? <laughs> uh, so that's like the big picture, though. That's why we're we're really really watching this with anticipation, mm -hmm. anticipation, anticipation. Oh yeah, yeah. we have our triggers. Uh, we're waiting for the whites uh, of their eyes to pull our trigger. Yeah. Well, we're not going to hurt anybody, but you know, we're um, it's more like a squirt gun. We're gonna we're gonna squirt them. So this is my chart that I'm looking at, right? So these are the key. This is these are daily candles, by the way. This is my shorting, uh, longing. Um, so basically. We banged against this bop bop twice and got rejected. Um, and that's what I was expecting because we had these two double tops up here. And so as that comes down, um, we're going to find out if we're going to bang on this 21. If we do and we fail, we're probably finding a way down to 18K. So uh, just a little view Keep here. Again, this is not financial advice, but uh, I'm certainly paying attention to these key levels. And um, Jaime has some very interesting uh, content here too. Go for it. Yes. So and now that we're on that subject, of course, it's a red day for everyone. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that. The only one is the staking platform. Uh, one of the new ones that's expecting the staking to, um, Ethereum staking to get going. But back to what really matters. Bitcoin, what is it doing at this moment? Guys, this is the monthly candle. We just closed February pretty much even, which was an indecision candle. And as if you recall, we've been having this conversation for uh, a while now, uh, ever since December into January, where we want to see what happens. And if you notice, the, the rejection from that 50 moving average is occurring as we speak this is a perspective from the growth. So now we're looking at the levels. So the next level from down here, and we'll zoom in closer from the monthly in a second, but I want you to see from the macro perspective where we can touch. So the possibilities are 21,400, which was the Luna collapse, the beginning of it. And we have some news today where we still see bloodletting from that collapse. Uh, and I won't ruin it, but there's a bank, uh, one that, an off ramp for crypto exchanges from fiat into crypto and crypto into fiat. The, one of the big banks that have been around for a while are in trouble. So we'll look at that. But here we go. It continues to affect the market. And remember, I don't know what the news will be. No techni uh, technical trader, usually, they don't care about the news. Usually the news will match what the trade, the chart is yep. telling you. And this is pr prime example. If you just replay our videos, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're telling you what the chart is saying. We just don't know what the triggers will be in the market. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like Docker, guys. There's a narrative. It's, it's uncanny how this works. But we see 21,400 region as the next uh, support layer. And you're going to see how this matches the 19,000, the one at the bottom of this, your 19,500 more or less, is the next uh, support zone. And then, of course, the bottom where we rallied off of, which is sitting at 16,500. We have the 89 moving average coming up here at 15,200. And then the one I've been watching for a little while, a while now, is the monthly level top at 13,800. The big question is, what will happen next? So let me move on to the weekly, where you can see even uh, closer what's going on. Remember on Monday, no, Wednesday, uh, this week, we we're already telling you that it was rejecting off of the 200. And the 50 on Wednesday, 
telling you, hey, watch this, take profits. Uh, this is the time where if you're already in green, take some profits because there's always the next entry. My next entry levels are these levels, the Luna Collapse, the original. Also, the monthly level in 1,400, 500 area. And we're going to zoom in even closer now. So we're getting lower on time frames. Take a look at this. This is the three day. And you can see we're even exiting the previous. So if I were to stretch this down to where this was before, you can see that we even broke this level. You can really see the break of it when I move down to the daily chart. So now the single day. And here, a lot of day traders look at the daily chart for decisions. Here's an important thing that's occurring in the charts today. One, we came out of that uh, ascending uh, channel, broke down below the 50 moving average. Watch this spot today, guys, because this is going to be critical. This level right there. Uh, you can't see the 200, but see this red one right here? This is the 200 moving average. Look at the price. It's about 19750 just above the 19500 You see how the 19500 to 700 is a an important level to watch today. The one right before that is, of course, the FTX breakdown point. So we should see some bounce, some drag through the 21,300 region where it, we broke down from. Now we're coming down to test it as support. We may see a slight bounce off of that in the short term. My real target and my first entry for long-term swing trade up is truly this 200 daily moving average, which is at 19,700 to 19,500 region. That's what we're going to be watching closely over the weekend, what happens next. But watch the chart itself. Do you see the price has been rising up until yesterday? It has been on this rising channel. But look, while it's rising here, the really stupid indicator or the relative strength index is that rocket fuel, that impulse that you feel the rocket rising. You should feel as we're reaching the the horizon, uh, the edge of the atmosphere, you should feel even harder push forward if we were bullish. But ever since our run-up in January, I've been uh, telling you that we seem to be losing the strength as the price rises. The strength down here has been coming down, which tells you, and that was the foreshadowing of this pullback right now. That's how you really can tell if there is true strength up. Even though you saw Twitter and the news and everyone saying, oh, Bitcoin to 30,000 or, or rallying up, you could see the strength descending as the price was going up. That's a bearish divergence, meaning there's not enough fuel. Although the price looks like it's rising, the strength keeps uh, losing, coming out. There's no true umph into this move. So that's why now I'm looking. Now, keep in mind, though, that rise we had in January is a good rise. Like there was volume behind it and the strength rose to it. It just couldn't keep it up there. So, But on top of that, here's the important thing. This shows strength in January. So to me, it's a bottom formation occurring as we speak now. The question is, will we bottom at the 19,500 or will we bottom where we were prior, where we took off from, or do we keep going down to the other levels? I am not going to risk it myself. Literally, I'm placing orders down from the 19,500 all the way down to 9,200 9, is where my lo swing lungs are at. Not financial advice. I'm just sharing with you all my mistakes and and what I'm doing and holding myself accountable to anyone watching also like, hey, uh, this is what I see. Now, these are the probabilities. So it's everything's about probabilities. 
Uh, you do what you need to do, do your own research, but this is what we're looking at. Now we should see what watch. And this pullback is a healthy pullback. We need to pull back so we can gain strength and rise again. So uh, keep your eyes on this move and we should be an uh, interesting weekend. It should be a pullback weekend. And the big telling sign will be what? how does this close today? Does it close below the 50 moving average? If it does, uh, over the weekend, we should see it tap it as resistance. Or if it closes above, that means it's confirmed support and we continue uh, rising up to this bottom, this channel price. But with the strength coming down, beware of longing at this price level. If you're a day trader, yeah, uh, here's a profit opportunity if we close above the 50. If we do not, look out below and start setting your buys for the long term. Uh, that's it. That's pretty much what's going on with price action. Juicy. That's um, pretty juicy, actually. Like th th just, just the fact that we see the bottom formation really starting to come in. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's nice. So it, it's kind of like, hey, everyone, have your money ready because whenever... Yes the 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 quick move happens you want to just capitalize on it so yes when these capitulations that's what they're called they're fast guys so if you don't have your your trades ready uh you may not catch it you may end up chasing it back up so that's the importance of doing your research and seeing where these bottoms could be mm -hmm. spread your entries you know and of course always use money you can afford to lose because all this is probabilities you're just playing the market but in a way that you try to put the odds in your favor of course mm -hmm. and when it flashes those entries your entry should just hit boom 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 and hopefully it shows um and it comes with experience and making mistakes yeah so. that's, that's that's it man uh roll call what's up what's up what's up in Indo crypto. crypto. Good morning. Reporting for duty. Hope you have a rad week, man. Yeah. Uh, Boston. What's up, boy, boy? How are you, sir? Good, Good morning. morning to you. Happy sir. Friday, man. Happy Friday. Yeah. Indo says 16K is what he calls the hungry hippo zone. <laughs> yes. Without a doubt. There's quite a it's, few people watching that, guys. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Just bossy. What's just up? Bossy. Bro? Good morning, man. Yeah. Uh, Indo saying, uh, Jaime doesn't talk the talk. He also walks that talk. Yes. I make my <laughs> mistakes yeah. in public. <laughs> yeah. I stress my family out in public with this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It's the only that, way that, to do it, guys. That corrects me up. My, my wife, she's like, she's like, why did you just move that much money? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't mortgage so, that house, uh, please. No, 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 nothing reckless for sure. Uh, but you know, like I said, I'm I'm buying that dip, baby. I'm buying that dip. Uh, so let us get into the news, shall we? So our first article for the day: Polygon. Hey, oh, Polygon launches Web three identification service using zero knowledge proofs. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why would this be important if people are developing applications and signing in as a normal feature set? Hmm? Yes. So let's check this. Uh, so Polygon, the Ethereum sidechain, released a Web3 identification service called Polygon ID that will allow blockchain-based applications to authenticate user credentials without compromising personal information. And I still have roll call. I apologize. Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> kids these days. Uh, Polygon-based crypto and NFT projects such as Kaleido, Fractal, and Collab.land have already shown support for Polygon ID, which mm -hmm. is accompanied with a developer toolkit. Make a Play-Doh snake, y'all. Make a Play-Doh snake, hey. y'all. You, know? <laughs> uh, you know, the offering can verify user data for blockchain apps, while maintaining privacy on chain, it uses zero knowledge proofs or ZK proofs, which can authenticate data while keeping it encrypted and hidden for the verifying party. Yep. I'm vibing with that, man. Yes. So it's like trust I but verify, but there's basically a uh, there's a like hash layer in between 
so you can know that it's legitimate because you know how the service works but uh basically your uh information isn't there it's almost like um in in, in some cloud systems like uh just for example like office 365 there's a thing called password hash sync where basically a hash of your password is stored and that's used but your password itself isn't stored on on cloud right so uh it's it's a known pattern it works in enterprise and i'm glad that we're seeing that kind of show up yeah. in uh blockchain because blockchain's starting to really grow up and you know get its ugly teeth its adult teeth grown in that are a little <laughs> bigger than they need to be for its face but it'll grow into them it'll get braces you know? <laughs> they look cute though it does look yeah. cute. <laughs> so huge teeth <laughs> chipmunk. what's up chompers uh, yeah what's up what's up yeah so look at this so so polygon id could be beneficial in compliance using cases such as know your client or kyc process required for centralized exchanges permission DeFi platforms as well as fiat payment for on-ramp and off-ramp it also works alongside polygon's wallet so polygon id enables compliance for both web 2 and web 3 industries isn't that beautiful mm -hmm. which strengthens the regulatory framework through know your customer and aml checks the reusability and self-sovereignty of credentials also reduces the cost, time, and complexity of user onboarding and user verification. Let's go. A project spokesman, spokesperson said in a statement, um, so Polygon Labs core developers have integrated this identity toolkit technology into Polygon ZK, which means zero knowledge, uh, EVM, uh, which that's how you basically have virtual machines that are, are running smart contracts on, on Polygon, uh, which is expected to launch later this month. So literally like March, this is going to be production. Like that's rad. And, and I, I know we talk about tools all the time in the space and how we're constantly getting new software developer kits, new toolkits that make it easy for excellent applications to be developed. Well, this is another drop in that bucket. We're, we're coming yes. into very, very fertile times. Yeah, and, um, you know, let's, let's make some crypto babies, right? Let's, let's make some applications. Let's make some stuff that's cool. And uh, we can show everyone we know how cute they are. Hmm? Yes, with our building, guys, no matter what the market does, uh, price-wise, everyone watches the price, but not very many watch what is being built. And that's the difference between uh, OGs and the old community, this community that we're building currently together, all of us, it's we understand that regardless of what price action does, because that foundation is being laid, you will see that growth coming up. So if you remember the old Amazon mm -hmm. days, back before the dot bomb, it was growing. It fell with the rest of the market, just like crypto may fall with everybody together. Um, it rose like a phoenix. And that's what we're going to see with these projects that continue building, regardless yeah. of what price action does. So you may hear soon uh, within March, uh, as we mentioned on Wednesday, March may be a bloody month and we may see a lot of shakeout going on, but the builders are the ones that are going to rise above this all. And right. Polygon is one of those uh, puppies that are, I believe, long run are building the right thing. Yep, totally agree. And Indo's laughing at you. Uh, he's laughing at you. They're going to laugh at you. So I, I just want everyone to see that this space has tools that are being developed that are legitimate they are world class they're really starting to grow up in their their uh applications and they're becoming in parity in step with enterprise solutions so big companies with big money mm -hmm. are starting to go okay this isn't just uh an experiment it looks like right. it's now actually past some of the experiments and we're into real production here's some money go go build something that corners the market that's the com when we hear these conversations by the way um uh, you know the the circles that Jaime and I are, are talking with. Um, you know, people are often uh, kind of bringing that up. They're they're bringing up that like there's viable tools in the space and they want to corner the market. And so, like we're showing you this to kind of tip you off. Like if any of this interests you, you should really go and see what it takes to develop this stuff. It's going to be hard work, but uh, it'll certainly pay out and it, it will be fun because the people who do this type of work are really passionate about what they're doing. So, yeah. Um, 
Yep. So uh, along with, uh, you know, other tools, let's uh, talk about our next story here. So Solana. So Solana proposed network upgrade changes following recent outage. So yeah, they're, they're, they recognize the outage was very faux pas. They don't want to do it again. They're right. trying to figure out what can be done to prevent that kind of thing from happening and just to improve the experience in general if they can. If you can fix a problem and make it better, uh, you really win twice, right? Mm -hmm. So let's read this. <clears throat> Solana co-founder said plans are in place to improve network reliability. The Solana network suffered a significant outage on February 25th, leading to downtime that lasted close to 20 hours. It was the first interruption of service to occur this year. However, 2022 saw 11 major outages. Oh, no. Say it ain't so. 2022 yeah. saw I remember 11. those. But uh, um, SBF was throwing money like was water at that time yeah well he he whips out all, all kinds of things and three minor ones cementing a reputation for poor network reliability mm -hmm. yeah Central it'd be lines. like that don't it uh so they said uh last week's outage was related to the 1.14 network update which was intended to bring speed and scale improvements up to 1.0 14 release, core engineers were working to fix live problems that were impacting the network speed and usability. These issues included invalid gas metering, lack of flow control for transactions, lack of fee markets, spiraling RAM storage and restart overhead. Yeah. So I can speak to this just as a, a guy who's supported servers for a long time. Um, these guys were doing good work and mm -hmm sometimes when you're doing that stuff like you're bushwhacking you don't know what's going to happen and uh that's kind of what happened they're trying they were in good faith trying to fix it and some craziness happened because uh we do it live right so mm -hmm. uh i'm actually not going to throw shade at them for this one uh just figure it out and don't let it stay in this state for very long yes you know <clears throat> however the new building yeah. you have to you have to uh, roll with the punches, baby. However, the rollout of 1.14 update triggered significant network degradation, the cause of which is unknown at this time, even still. An investigation to determine the root cause is still ongoing. So they still haven't figured that out, according to this article. Um, Solana focused on network stability. So addressing this issue will focus on improving the software releases release process for updates. Um, this will involve using external developers. Okay, so they're this is how they're solving the scaling problem of like, our guys are busy. We don't know what to do. They're using external developers to solve this. That They're basically hiring uh, contractors to help fix this matter and auditors to hunt bugs and exploits. So other changes include forming an adversarial team, basically a, a hacker team, uh, to build additional hooks and instruments into the validator code. Uh, for more thorough testing. So they're basically going to try to pop it as hard as they can um, and see if they can break it on their own so they can kind of control uh, when things break um, and, and be able to reverse them knowing what they poked and prodded it with. You know? Do you think they should be doing things like Ethereum where they do these hackathons uh, with uh, bounties? They do. They do. They just okay. said they they have bug bounties. This whole hunt for bugs and exploits. Okay. Uh, they're paying people to specifically do, do bug bounty. Okay. So yes, I do think they should, and I think that's what that implies right there. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Node should be automatically discovering the latest optimistically confirmed slot and sharing the ledger with each other if it's missing. So uh, they said over the past 12 months, Solana was already working on improving network stability through various initiatives, including building a second validator client, better tooling, upgrading the network communication protocol to QI, QUIC. I actually don't know what that is. I'll, just, I'll look that up later. Um, and improvements to RPC, remote procedure call infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So they're doing real construction. They... they uh, Basically put Solana out, they tested it, they saw if it was good enough, and it said, no, I'm not good enough, and here's all the things that break. And so now they're they're being really diligent about hiring more hands to get on this and, and swarm the issue until it's solved. So that is exactly uh, what uh, prudent business wisdom would tell you, right? Swarm the issue, get all hands on deck, solve the problem, get over it quickly. Um, just pull that Band-Aid off and rip it, right? Yep. Stop Even if it means... In. Even if it means, uh, you know, you have everyone in the house grocery shopping, uh, 
and, and someone at the house isn't cooking, uh, everyone's going to get back and you're going to have all the ingredients to cook. And you're not going to have hangups. So that's kind of the, uh, the idea here, right? Um, you swarm on something, get a ton of people to focus on wherever you're bottlenecked and you mm -hmm. knock that bottleneck out and you get back to business. Right. And, um, that's actually a good business, uh, point. Like if you're ever building a business, this is true of, of families and, or, you know, nonprofit organizations too. Um, any optimization you make after the bottleneck doesn't freaking matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because you're still bottlenecked. You're not going to feel any of those optimizations you made. And so, uh, it, it's always recommended to swarm. The issue is the language used. You have a lot of people who are normally doing things, all focusing their efforts on fixing that bottleneck. Cause once that bottleneck gets fixed, everyone can get back to our scheduled programming and we can figure out where our next bottleneck is and swarm that. And that creates efficiencies in our, in the entire system. Right. So that's a little bit of uh, business wisdom. If you do that, you're gonna make a lot of money. Yes. Really. You're gonna make a, you're gonna make some stupid money. Cause there's a lot of people uh, in important, you know, high titles that don't do that and their companies suffer for it. So just to hear, hear that out, fix and focus on wherever the bottleneck is, fix it and be serious about it. Like, beat the snot out of that bottleneck until it's done. Right. And then move on. Uh, so anyways, I won't uh, beat that to death, but <laughs> here it's pretty important. It's yes. pretty important. Precisely. Opa! So <clears throat> commodities versus securities, a third option for crypto regulations makes sense. Yeah. I can't uh, agree more. Actually, that is a good looking steak with legs. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what, that's steak, right? There's steak yes, here, it is. And a steak here. And a steak <laughs> here. Anywho, so one of the main topics that dominated the crypto market so far this year. Let me zoom in. This is stupid. So, man, uh, one of the main topics that dominated for crypto markets so far this year is the topic of regulation. We've heard that word once or twice. Uh, the, <laughs> the numerous black swan events that occurred last year highlighted the need for crypto regulation. Many industry participants agree that cryptocurrency regulation is the right path for the industry, mainly for consumer protection. I don't know about that. I have mixed feelings. Mixed feelings. I know. Control. Control. But we give up uh, security for security. Yeah, control for security. So we give our... It's, it's a bad process. We should be self-sovereign when it comes to these things, but... A lot of people are choosing to give up those liberties for security. Yeah, I have mixed feelings on this specifically because um, it, it, it to me it kind of feels like you're just you're, you're pulling punches on people. And do your own research is so serious. Like if you don't do your own research, I don't. I, there should be some protections against people promising one thing and and not delivering it. Maybe, 100%. but but uh, as far as like how the government's going to use that as the exploit to get in and then overreach. Uh, yes. That's what I'm concerned about. So as long as there's humans in that level, uh, because we're supposed to be putting people to watch out for the community, for America, mm -hmm. you know, if we put them in power, they should be for their constituents. They should be for their people. Um, and that's the concern here because it, like we saw with, with the FTX debacle, uh, so many politicians uh, had their hands greased and it, so they could lean in a certain favor it in certain government agencies that should be watching were actually mm -hmm. have in bed it it creates that that's the risk of us rely over relying or giving too much power to the people in power yeah. it they forget that they are there for the people not the other way around for their vested interests or investments you know it's it should be for everybody and that's yeah yeah it, it, someone needs an ass whoop and i'll say that um <laughs> anyways uh so <clears throat> to read this uh, many industry participants agree cryptocurrency regulation is the right path for the industry mainly for consumer protection uh coinbase ceo brian army strongy uh was it's not his name. It's Brian Armstrong um, was among the executives who expressed their opinions about the industry and regulation. 
as far as regulation is concerned, Armstrong noted that Coinbase sought out money transmission licenses from the beginning. So Coinbase is like, dude, like we we've literally been trying to play your game this entire time. And so don't freaking put us in a compromised position when we asked you for help and you you spat on us, right? Like, mm-hmm. like don't exasperate good people, right? <laughs> No win situations are no win for anybody because you piss off the wrong person, right? Uh, Whatever the hell that means. So crypto is the most important technology that can help update the financial system, says Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, who has a lovely bald head. Uh, The rest of the world is trying to draw crypto companies in the U.S. risk falling behind. Uh, Or the the U.S. really risk falling behind. I can't speak. The U.S. really risks falling behind. Say that five times fast. That's kind of that's kind of a tongue twister. Hmm. <laughs> yellow leather, yellow leather, yellow leather. Right. Uh, Armstrong's statement underscores just one of the numerous regulatory facets of the crypto industry. The companies are easy to regulate, but there is a gray area where it comes to regulating cryptocurrencies. Existing regulatory frameworks have dictated that cryptocurrencies can either be categorized as a commodity or a security. Wow, we've talked about that. Uh, The unpopular opinion. Categorizing cryptocurrencies based on the rules set in place for the traditional financial system might not necessarily be the best way to go. I completely agree with that statement. Like, we're kind of dealing with things that aren't traditional finance. Like, we have these new things that exist and we're trying to stick them, you know, square peg into a round hole. And Why doesn't it fit? It's like, yeah, it's a different thing, dude. Like, this is new. This this isn't exactly the same as other things you've messed with, right? Like this concept of a decentralized autonomous organization, you know, just literally having a smart contract that acts as a as a business to execute the business's like agreement. It's like re- truly rewiring the traditional finance. It's re completely gutting mm. it. Oh, by the way, the state of Wyoming now allows you to register a DAO with the state of Wyoming as a business. So you can literally register a decentralized autonomous organization smart contract as a business with the state of Wyoming. So Wyoming is freaking shaking it up, dude. They're rad. Mm -hmm. So shout outs to all my cowboys in Wyoming. What's up? (laughs) Um, So, uh, you know, the reasons uh, for this point of view cut across multiple factors, including definitions of underlying technology or definition and underlying technology. Um, There have been attempts to classify cryptocurrencies and tokens based on consensus mechanisms or methods of distribution. And I don't think that's the way to go either Uh, because there's all sorts of things in the space that are like a twist on the same idea. Do you classify that as the original idea or do you put it in a new category, right? Um, I don't know. Bitcoin and Ethereum were both considered commodities because of the proof of stake consensus mechanism. What are you talking about? Bitcoin? Proof of stake? I don't know. However, yeah, Ethereum, you well, I need to go and spank whoever wrote this. You wrong oh uh, however, Ethereum transitioned to okay, I see. They yeah, just they, meant this to be a proof, proof of, work, of right work. work. Yes, yeah, yeah. precisely. So typo, okay, typo. Gotcha. emissions. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Bitcoin and Ethereum were both considered commodities because of proof of stake, proof of work. Consensus mechanisms. However, Ethereum transitioned to proof of stake in 2022, but does that really make it a security? Well, good question. By definition, a commodity is a useful and fungible economic resource that has value. Commodities are usually tangible. Most commodities exist within physical realm. Hence, they can be touched. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Does, does that mean... Peaches and eggplants are also commodities? I think so. Uh, This is not the case for Bitcoin, which relies on a centralized digital medium. Mining is the main reason why Bitcoin is categorized as a commodity. Uh, Because it takes work to get it out and about. Ooh, get them! Kids these days. Uh, Securities are generally any type of tradable financial instrument that have attached value and can be traded. The wild card for cryptocurrencies is that they are decentralized, hence making it difficult for regulatory control. In addition, 
They operate on a global market, hence traversing multiple jurisdictions. As such, enforcing traditional regulatory measures may not be the most efficient way forward. 100%. 100%. Uh, this is, we're, we're dealing with a new pattern, and they're pretending it's the old pattern. And it ain't. This ain't the, the old thing. Um, so why a different path might be necessary? From a technological point of view, cryptocurrencies are much better off with an entirely different rule set. The traditional regulations may contribute to some extent. Yeah, they, they, they act as basically a a point of consultation, but they shouldn't be like the full definition, right? Mm -hmm. But But the key theme here is that they are within the digital domain. This is the first time the world has a technology that overcomes the double spending problem. Thank God for Bitcoin. Um, one that is capable of facilitating the evolution of the internet into a more powerful tool. The decentralized nature of most cryptocurrencies makes it more difficult to implement traditional regulations. Yep. On the other and, hand, go ahead, please. No, it, it's. It, I, I just wanted to highlight that, the importance of the double spending. Oh, sure. That's, that's the problem that finance has had in the past mm -hmm. uh, forever. It's like uh, back in the olden days, uh, if you had gold bars, you couldn't double spend it unless you went to one merchant and says, hey, give me this. Here's my gold bar. But yeah, I keep it and walk over to the next merchant. Hey, give me this. I have a gold bar. And you just uh, create contracts with others that, OK, for that gold bar, yeah. I'll give you this. Uh, but it got to the point where now you had long distance relationships where you would promise through the double spending uh, is where you could create two contracts and full, you know, rug pull one of them or both of them. And they never got their money yet. They sent you the goods through this technology. They resolve that issue of the double spin where you can show you have it and then make two promises simultaneously. Uh, that mechanism is what revolutionized uh, the revolution that Bitcoin implemented into its white paper. And that's why it's so revolutionary. It's the best engineered money out there. Hardest money too. Yeah. And if you're liking the show, go ahead and give it a uh, like and subscribe. It helps other people find this so you can help your noob friends stop getting wrecked. How does that sound? <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, absolutely. But Bitcoin is is solving brand new problems in, in unique and innovative ways. And, and uh, I don't think the world has caught up to that reality yet. But um, yeah, the uh, let's keep reading this piece here. So. Um, the decentralized nature of most cryptocurrencies makes it more difficult to implement traditional regulations because there's no CEO in a lot of these, right? Like the protocol is just out and about. Like, so who are you going to hold accountable? The people who built it? Well, no. Uh, the people who bought it? Well, maybe, but it, it doesn't fit the exact same pattern and they're trying to pretend it does. So on the other hand, it makes more sense to implement regulations that will keep corporates I think that means corporations and other market participants in check. Hmm. Uh, perhaps the best approach is to have an entirely new system of regulations in place. A system that allows the crypto market to blossom while boosting consumer protection. So, uh, yeah, shout outs to Michael Nadridu. You need to uh, do some spell checking on your site, my guy. Um, <laughs> no shade, but, you know, helping a brother out. So, Jaime probably has a lot of opinions about this one. This next article brought to us by Decrypt. Uh, Bitcoin miner capitulation has been completely different this cycle. CoinShares. A CoinShares analyst said the latest downturn has been completely different than the past thanks to orderly capital markets. So <clears throat> a cycle of miner capitulations can be observed throughout Bitcoin's history. When times are good, miners stockpile their Bitcoin, restricting the supply of new coins during high demand and serving as an additional multiplier to the general upward tr price trend. Uh, while times are bad, though, like the past few months, miners sell their Bitcoin treasuries, usually to cover operating expenses when mining is less profitable. Like when Bitcoin's price is low, or to pay off over leveraged positions. Oof, I may talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> no. when does this occur? The payoff over leverage position is when they FOMO into mining. And we saw a shit ton of that this time where even so 
even the ones that surprised me uh, that would do this, uh, which have been around for a while. Uh, one of them was um, shit. Well, of course, scientific. It was one of the largest. Scientific. Yes. Uh, I keep. I can't remember the other one, but it's not Murphy. Uh, Don't hang shit. on it. You're good. It'll come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happened is they they kept investing they kept signing contracts with bitmain or manufacturers of of asics or the miners and committing to these high prices uh so a miner that at that time was going for twelve thousand dollars today at this very moment you can get them for about 2600 bucks so imagine that it's like six almost six times cheaper and so when Bitcoin dropped in price, where we saw that double top and it started descending, now these, these mining companies had these contracts that they prepaid. They have to do a down payment to sign the contract. And then they have to pay those prices upon shipping. Well, imagine now they were paying six times what they could get it today. Pretty much a few of them didn't have any other option but to declare bankruptcy. To, they they were trying to get out of the contract. They couldn't do it. Now they had to declare bankruptcy. So that's the over leveraging of the position when you put mm -hmm. too much capital at the wrong time. When they should be going uh, in hard is during nice. these times. Yes, is these times. Um, and that's where this bear market has been different this minor capitulation has been different uh it's been bloodier of course because you see shenanigans in the financial area and these same financial companies are the ones funding the purchasing of the the miners a lot of them so it's like top to bottom you're seeing these capitulations occur and we're also seeing sale of bitcoin traditionally people during these bear markets would be mining it because they have enough money, enough runway to produce. Yep. And that way, by the next bull run, they they sell the tops. And you can actually see the hash rate drop with the price. So the mining companies that have that vision and understand how to do it are selling the top. A lot of them are even selling the miners at the top because they know that with that capital that they're gaining, they can buy it cheaper at, the bot at this bottom of the bear market. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of the dynamics that are different. So quite a few more mining companies than I expected went bankrupt. Uh, Riot is doing it correctly because they have control of their power purchase agreement, how right. much they're paying for their power. And there's a few other industries that are making the right moves today. And we're actually involved in a few of those uh, opportunities currently because we do not over leverage. We actually let uh, the investors know, hey, guys, we're reaching a, a turning point. So this is the time to build the war chest, cash out, build that war chest. And then when we're in th at the bottom of the market, that's when you start getting back into the uh, buying the assets themselves. Because the miner themselves, the ones that are worth 2600 or the higher end ones, uh, 3000 and change today, they will be worth twelve thousand, up to fifteen thousand in certain moments at the next bull run. So, mm -hmm. not only are you making money on mining Bitcoin, you're also uh, quadrupling, tripling, or quadrupling the value of your ASIC, the asset right. itself. So, that's it's the secret tiny. sauce. It really is, and and, and so the the whole idea here is don't be like these guys because you know a good business. Buys high and sells low. That's how you make money. Wait, <laughs> yeah. that's a joke. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop it. Um, Bad dog. Yeah. So, so the people are are getting played. They're they're just there was a lot of dummies who are like, yeah, we'll be, be, be max bidding all the way. It's yeah, only green, oh. only green, only up, only up, and and they were doing that, acting like it was some bottle flip game, and yeah. uh, like you know in Silicon Valley, you ever watched that that show? um on, from hbo they're like always blue always blue oh that's literally been like the bitcoin 
mining market. People were just like, yeah, I know we're in a bull market, but you and they just like spent yeah. a ton of money on it and and just kept doubling down, doubling down. It, you, you've seen this at casinos, though, like you'll see some guy play blackjack yeah. and he'll be up. He'll be up like a good amount and he'll just keep playing. He's like, leave the table, bro. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you gotta know when to pull, when to fold. <laughs> just always doubling down is not the move, bro. It's not yeah. the move. But anyways, uh, this this article here continuing. Um, when times are good, miner stockpile their Bitcoin, restricting the supply of new coins during high demand and serving as an additional multiplier to the general upward price trend. So when times are bad, like the past few months, which we've totally seen, Miners sell their Bitcoin treasuries, usually to cover operating expenses when mining is less profitable. And that's exactly what's happening. They're having to close shop because they're pooping the bed. And see, and I don't quite agree with how they wrote those two paragraphs just now, because they say when times are good, they're holding it back. Yes, they are. What few people realize, but you can see in the price action is when they know the top is the region of the top, they actually dump when the times are good. Of course. That's when they sell into the market. Not only do you see that, you also see the hash rate drop in parallel. You and I mm -hmm. just did that exercise, that financial yep. exercise in the charts where we could see the hash rate drop with the price and you could see the market flooded with Bitcoin at these yep. tops because they know this is the time to exit. So, and then they say when the times are bad, like the past few months, miners sell their Bitcoin. No, the ones who planned yeah. already sold the top. If you're the dumb ones... and you poop the bed, yes, you have to sell your car to pay for your over leveraged yes. mortgage. Absolutely. The yellowers are the ones that are paying, selling during the worst times. There were some big yellowers, though. Can we agree on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro. <clears throat> and this market has been, and, and it's easy to explain. Previous markets, it's all speculators, but of the smaller size. Mm -hmm. This market, this bear market, it, you have more institutions playing. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that yellowed in. They should have learned from the retail market uh, that began this, and they were waiting for institutions. Well, the bigger institutions are about to enter once we get clarity. So, yes, that that's a little off. The, yellow, the guys that said, yay! Uh, at yeah, the top of the market, they're the ones selling now. There's different groups of people, and I think they're talking about just one of those groups of people. They're talking yes. about the guys who just double down every single time. Like they're literally max bidding on every single, yes. you know, buying every dip from the top of the market, not buying every dip when the market's forming a bottom. Yeah. It's two different philosophies. Yeah, dude. But uh, great, great perspective on that, Jaime. Um, Let's finish this article real quick. Uh, back in June 22, uh, the, for example, a report by crypto analysis at Arcane Research revealed that during the month of May, publicly traded Bitcoin miners like Marathon, that's the word you're looking for. Marathon, that's it. Yeah. Those are the Thank guys. you. Marathon Digital, they shit the bed. And Riot yeah. Blockchain sold more Bitcoin than they mined. A stark reversal of fortunes from the first four months of the year when the same miners sold less than a third of their earnings. And so that's kind of the big idea here. Basically, <clears throat> uh, the whole pattern is big miners were only selling what they needed to sell to just pay the electrical and not and basically mitigate the risk that they're holding onto themselves. They don't, but during the bear markets, it doesn't make sense for you to sell your Bitcoin at a loss. It makes sense instead for you to have a war chest from when times were a little better. And you can just kind of float. You can just pay the electrical bill. You can just pay the utilities uh, and hope that the bear market's not too long. And once the bear market's over, you're glad you did that because you hodled all this Bitcoin that's worth three, four, five times what that money you spent just to keep the lights on yep. was. And that can go partially into your war chest for the next bear market. A lot of companies weren't doing that. And what this is saying is that they just were way over leveraged and did not make good financial sense in Marathon uh, woke up and found a cold little turd in their bed and a dog yes. spazzing around. Um, who pooped in the bed, I wonder? Who did that? <laughs> Could it be the dog that's freaking out in three or four in the morning? Probably. Um, you know, this cycle's been different, though. Uh, CoinShares Bitcoin Research Lead, Christopher Bendix, I won't say words anymore, um, told Decrypt. So, so maybe this guy's smart. I may, if you can make a point to talk to this fella. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll 
take him out to get some biscuits and, and, and tea. Um, when you had a much less efficient capital market, it was probably a lot less orderly. And we saw the manifestation previously as these big pullbacks and difficulty that was worded terribly. He said, uh, comparing the current network to the industry was less established. That's true. Um, that's just, that just hasn't happened this time, even though we had speculator bankruptcies and a bunch of operating struggles. So yeah, people are are certainly running things differently this time around. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't know why. I, I almost wonder if there's like some conspiracy Friday. I, I, I no, but legitimately, I, I kind of wonder if that's the case. I, I wonder if some of these companies are like, hey man, you have your company poop the bed, go bankrupt, and then my company will buy you out at really low prices and we'll give you some skin on the top. I don't maybe that happens. I don't know. But yeah. conspiracy Friday, maybe that happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, this is super funny, actually. So our, our last article for the day here, uh, Jim Cramer's ETF goes live. So Jim Cramer is this clown on uh, mainstream media who does this show called Mad Money where he pretends that he knows what he's talking about. And people have been just trading the opposite of whatever this guy trades and they make money doing it. Just whatever this guy is like, you got to buy it. It's so good. If you just do the opposite of that, you do well. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Or if he's like, sell it, it's crap. Buy more of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inverse Kramer so, is what they call it. Yeah. And so there's a there's an exchange traded fund uh you know for Jim Kramer, which is hilarious. That goes live and people are just are counter trading his ETF. They're just flipping the <laughs> Are you serious? Let me find yes. that ETF. Yeah, that's what this is about here. So <laughs> let's read this. Uh, so two ETFs began trading on Chicago Board Options Exchange on Thursday that are focused on stock picks by Mad Money host Jim Cramer. <laughs> what what was the ticker? What was the ticker at the top? Uh, it, it was S Jim. So inverse Kramer, that's the one I, I believe in. L Jim and S Jim. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the inverse. So S Jim. Uh, uh, kids these days. So the, the newly launched exchange traded funds will either trade in favor or against the stock recommendations of Jim Cramer. What a freaking meme. This is meme stocks This in the traditional environment. That's what this is. <laughs> Cramer is the celebrity host of CNBC's Mad Money. Uh, the funds could Holy short shit. sell his stock recommendations of purchase or purchase businesses he advises against. Both ETFs are actively managed funds. Bro, it's real. <laughs> I know. I know that's oh. is this not like this is like me this is crypto memes finding themselves like they like opened the wrong door and found themselves in like the traditional markets like uh they have food and they just stayed <laughs> bro this is fucked up you know why because, <laughs> no it really is because bitcoin can't get an ETF but Jim Cramer can I know what the hell what the hell Lamau. holy yeah. shit <laughs> And I was like, "Wow, dude, that's fuck. yeah." This is this is memes. Uh, this is quality memes. So Kramer's ETFs don't involve him directly. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. Okay, bud. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. Jim Kramer has two new ETFs to his name as he gained notoriety for his subpar cryptocurrency <laughs> investment <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah. That's so polite. Subpar, <laughs> like, absolute <laughs> trash. Yeah. The the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, received the preliminary prospectus for both funds in October, 2022. So the advisory company behind the ETFs is Tuttle Capital Management. Those the two guys. Kramer. Oh, I clicked it. Why? Um, you know, the, the, the Kramer ETFs listed March 2nd. So yeehaw, that's yesterday. Well, and it's there. It's inverse live, Kramer. Actually. And I know uh, inverse Kramer and long Kramer is uh yeah, bro, that's the perfect indicator that we can use. <laughs> I love it so much. So, short or long, twenty to fifty stocks ETFs by monitoring Kramer's positions on those names on CNBC Twitter daily held for five days. <laughs> wow! Bro. <laughs> Look at this guy's face. Like it just that just cracks me up. Like, yeah. If you guys look at his history, even during the the implosion in 2008, he kept saying everything was safe. I would invest in this and then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love him or hate him. Jim Cramer is a polarizing figure. Yeah, 
Yeah, he is. According to CEO and CIO, Matthew Tuttle of Tuttle Capital Management, we want to give investors on both sides of the debate a way to express their views, aka he wants to capitalize on memes. That's what that means. Um, and create products that can provide diversification to traditional portfolios on memes. That's what that means. Um, according to the prospectus, the ETF advisor keeps tabs on Kramer stock picks and the general market recommendations throughout the trading day. This includes public recommendations via Twitter or his CNBC television shows. The fund trades equities or ETFs, including inverse index ETFs and index ETFs, to take the opposite position. That said, the ETFs do not directly involve the television personality. Therefore, the trust, the funds, and the funds investment advisors removed all affiliation with Jim Cramer or his media outlets. Did, did they? Because what I see is a little phone call could uh, corroborate a, a pretty convenient scenario here. So I, I don't. I wonder if this is even gonna be up for very long, or if <laughs> like, it's gonna be found uh, having but, some some legal holes in it. Yeah. And you see, SEC allows this. You know, a meme, and it allows it. All yeah. right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hi, May's dipping out. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Crypto and Coffee. It's been a fun Friday. This was fun. Thank you for this. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Indo says, goes to show who's pulling the strings and what the mass media, uh, they want the mass media to be paying attention to instead of the real picture. BTC all the way. Real talk, dude. And Gundy, yo, what's up, boy, boy? Yeah, happy freaking awesome Friday, bud. Yeah, nothing to see here. Move along. Yeah, like, like it's not some game being played. I, exactly. So, Anyways, I am the Data Lord. Uh, we were joined by Jaime. Uh, this is Crypto and Coffee, where we drink about coffee, talk about crypto. It's a joke. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful Friday, if you would. Uh, make sure you DCA. Leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, share this with your friends if you think this could benefit them. And uh, keep calm and hodl on. We'll see you on Monday, good friends. Woo! Yep! Woo! Yeah! <laughs>